Could you be washing your curly hair improperly and not even realize it? Even though it seems super basic with how to wash your hair, there might be some things that you didn't consider for naturally curly hair, especially if you're experiencing a ton of frizz, maybe your hair is still dry after wash day, or maybe it gets very oily and a lot of product buildup even on next day hair, then you may be shampooing and conditioning improperly. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love simplifying things like this. I love talking about the science of hair and really helping you problem solve. So if you're into that sort of thing, definitely subscribe before you go. I also wanted to thank AG for partnering with me for this video. They're one of my all time favorite brands. They make such high quality products and they're really focused on sustainability. They actually have some refillable products and they have a sale going on right now where if you purchase one of their leader size products, you get a free regular size product along with it. So it's such a great deal. I'll have those sale days in the description box down below. It's like a $34 value that you're getting for free. So great deal there. And then if you are seeing this after the sale dates, you can always use my coupon code anytime for AG. You can't combine it with this sale, but you can always use it after the sale. So I'll have my coupon code and my links to everything linked in the description box below the video and in the pinned comments. The first common mistake that people tend to make is applying shampoo to tangled hair, causing the hair to become even more matted, tangled up, and just a mess. I have very tangly hair. It's kind of like Velcro, so I can't really go straight in with shampoo. I mean, I can, but I end up with a bigger mess that I then have to try and detangle later with conditioner. As you can see, my hair is super tangly right now. This has been four or five days since I previously washed my hair. So going straight in with shampoo just makes it worse because shampoo tends to kind of tangle up our hair naturally as we're scrubbing our scalp. Instead, you can try detangling first with a bit of conditioner on wet hair, or you can detangle dry first with a bit of oil. That's the pre-shampoo oil method that I usually share. That's a great way to prevent breakage, especially if you have very fragile hair, but I also wanted to show this conditioner method. You just wet your hair down and detangle first with conditioner. So I'm using the AG Curl Fresh Coconut Avocado Conditioner, which contains rich coconut oil, avocado oil, and mango butter to smooth and protect the hair is cuticle. It comes in the refillable aluminum bottle, which I love. It's super creamy and thick and rich, and it's great at detangling. So detangling first will help remove the tangles and the loose hairs, getting them out of the way, so that way I can more easily reach my scalp when I do go to shampoo, and the hair won't mat up worse, becoming just a tangled, matted mess. This order of conditioning before shampoo is not required for all hair types, but it can certainly help if you're someone who really struggles with tangles, damage, and breakage. So give it a try on your next wash day and let me know how it goes. I do rinse it out slightly, not completely, but I do rinse my hair and kind of squeeze out some of that excess before I shampoo. For shampoo, I'm using the AG Curl Fresh Shampoo. So both of these come in those refillable aluminum bottles so there's less waste and you can just refill them with the liter size pouches. The Curl Fresh Shampoo has sulfate-free cleansing agents that are very effective at removing impurities but also not stripping our delicate curls. It contains pea and rice amino acids which increase moisture and curl retention. Common mistake number two is not thoroughly applying your shampoo, leaving behind oil, buildup, and sweat. If you just go right in with with a dollop of shampoo in one area and then try and spread it around, you might not be covering your entire head. So instead, you can try emulsifying the shampoo in your hands first, then applying it to your scalp. So that's just where you rub your hands together, you get this creamy lather, then you can apply it to your scalp and start to work it in and gradually increase the lather as you go. You may also need to section your hair if your hair is very thick to ensure you coat all areas. Now my hair is low density, so I don't have to do this, but I probably should because sometimes I miss the lower area. But you can see if you apply it in sections, you can really get all areas, especially if you have very thick hair. I'm also taking my time to ensure that I'm scrubbing all areas, especially around the hairline, because that's where makeup gets left behind and can build up with hair products and sweat and skincare. I'm also adding a little bit of water as I go that can help to increase your lather so that way you don't have to add more shampoo as you go, you can just add more water. When I'm shampooing, I gently massage my scalp with the pads of my fingers. You don't wanna rush when you do this, especially if you're using a very mild shampoo. You really need that friction on your fingers to lift away buildup and dead skin. This shampoo is pretty effective. You get a great lather, so it doesn't require a ton of scrubbing, but if you're using something like a super mild shampoo that doesn't really lather, you definitely 
definitely have to take time to do this manual scrubbing. You can also use a scalp massager if you'd like to really get down to the scalp. This is especially helpful for those with very thick hair or if you have a dry scalp with a lot of flakes, this can help lift it away. I recommend a silicone scrubber though and not something that is too harsh on the scalp. You also don't wanna use your nails or anything that's going to scratch your scalp. You wanna be very gentle. After I've covered all areas, I rinse out the shampoo. Then I usually like to check my scalp to make sure I'm not seeing any product residue on my fingers or any buildup. If I still see some, I go in with another round of shampoo. So this double cleansing method is something you typically hear about with skincare routines when you're washing your face, but double cleansing your scalp and your hair may actually be necessary, especially if you're somebody that gets a lot of buildup or if you sweat a lot, you might still see a little bit of that residue on your fingers or under your nails as you're shampooing. You would be shocked at how much more lather you get to the second time around. The first time the shampoo is removing that oil and product residue, and the second time you really get a deep cleanse once that's out of the way. It's not always necessary for all people, and this Curl Fresh shampoo actually does a really good job, so I don't usually find myself needing to double cleanse when using the AG shampoos because they are very effective. The third common shampoo mistake is shampooing too quickly and too rough by scrubbing the lengths and the ends of your hair upwards. This can cause so many tangles, breakage, and unnecessary frizz. Instead, try focusing on just mistakes massaging your scalp and letting the shampoo run down the lengths of your hair as I've been showing throughout this video. I still work the shampoo down at the hair shaft to make sure it's getting fully covered, but I'm keeping everything just in the downward motion. I'm not going against the cuticle direction that will just rough it up. Avoid lifting the lengths of your hair up to the head and scrubbing. You want to be very gentle and let the water and shampoo just run downwards. This is also why I prefer to shampoo in the upright position. You see me shampoo upside down a lot, but that's just for easier filming purposes for content but I do prefer to shampoo upright on a regular wash day because then my hair doesn't get all matted up and I'm able to actually reach the back of my head a lot easier. And I also notice a lot less shedding when I'm upright versus upside down. Moving on to conditioner. Our fourth common mistake is not thoroughly applying your conditioner, which leads to dry, brittle hair. Neglecting the hair at the root can cause so much root frizz. We've always heard to not apply conditioner to your roots, so they'll end up greasy, but we can't just neglect the hair on the top of our head and never condition it or apply products to it. After we shampoo, the pH of our hair is raised, which means the cuticle is lifted, it's susceptible to damage, frizz, and dullness. Conditioner lowers the pH back down to its natural state, which smooths the cuticle. Apply it to your ends first, and then work the rest back up to the top of your head. I like to glaze it over the surface of my roots so that way I'm more evenly coating the hair, but then I'm not getting it onto the scalp itself. I ensure I have plenty of conditioner on my hands as I'm detangling and removing all of the loose hairs. Fortunately, we already detangled before we shampoo, so there's really not much detangling to be done at this step at all. I'm really just removing the loose hairs and there might be just a little bit of tangling just from the scrubbing and all of the demoing that I had to do here. I also like to brush my conditioner through either just using my fingers or using a brush that's made to be used on wet hair. You wanna be very gentle when you're brushing wet hair. And this just helps make sure that it's evenly coating every single strand and none are left behind. Be very gentle with this. Make sure that your hair is already detangled. I don't usually detangle with a brush, even with conditioner in. I will just use my hands to detangle. This is mainly just to evenly distribute it because we don't want any hairs left behind because they will definitely stick out like frizz. After I'm done with that, I usually scrunch my hair, which is called the squish to condition method. This just helps the conditioner absorb into the hair and can really be helpful for people who have low porosity hair, which just means their cuticle doesn't easily let moisture in and products tend to just sit on the surface. I like to let it sit for a few minutes while I finish up my shower. Sometimes I'll pin it up and then I go ahead and wash everything, including my back. I don't like to leave conditioner behind and then I will rinse it out afterwards. When I'm rinsing out my conditioner, I like to gently massage my scalp to ensure that I'm rinsing any of it off. If it had gotten on my scalp, this just helps kind of lift it away and make sure that that water does get down to my scalp. Once it's fully rinsed out, I just like to run my fingers through my hair to then lift the hair off of the scalp so it's not just stuck to my head. This prevents the roots from getting stretched out and the curls start to form and it's the perfect base for styling. And just look at these before and after results. My hair is so clean, but it's not stripped and there's little to no wet frizz when using these techniques and these products from AG. My curls are now smoothed out, moisturized, and ready to style. I always wrap my hair in a cotton towel. When I get out of the shower, you don't wanna be using a regular bath towel on your hair. It can cause so much frizz. 
Then I just spritz it down with water because we want to make sure our hair is evenly wet to apply our stylers. For stylers, I'm using some of my all-time favorites from AG, the Recoil Curl Cream and the Liquid Effects Gel. I like to apply my curl cream to damp hair and then brush it through afterwards. A little goes a long way with recoil, so you definitely want to make sure that you emulsify it in your hands and then you can spread it around throughout your hair. I like to focus it first on the ends and the dry areas on the front section and then work the rest in and then comb it all the way through. I like to apply my gel in sections. I rake it through ensuring that I'm coating every single strand. This gel is so smooth and nice. It contains humidity blocking ingredients. It's definitely one of my all time favorite gels and definitely one of my favorite formulas. It has some proteins in it. It definitely helps to keep the curls lasting all week and in between wash days. I like how it makes it easy to refresh as well because it's so slippery and it can be reactivated with water. I'm also just doing a bit of brush styling. I've been really trying to not brush style my entire head. So I'm just focusing on problem areas which are just around my face just to help encourage that curl. After I'm done styling, I always like to diffuse. This gives me the best results. Once my hair is completely dry, then I'm ready to scrunch out the gel cast and fluff out the roots. I get so much volume when I do this routine. Sometimes I leave in a little bit of the cast just to make sure that my curls last a very long time. If you're experiencing buildup on your scalp or on your hair, it might feel very sticky or weighed down or your curls might not be bouncing up. It might look very dull and your curls might not just act the way that they usually do. That's how you know when it's time to clarify. And this is something that you should be doing on a regular basis, such as once a month or so. You also want to avoid using a super mild shampoo or a co-wash as your only cleanser, you do want to switch it up. So to remove product buildup and to clarify the hair, you'll want to switch out your regular shampoo for a clarifying shampoo about once a month or just depending on how often that you're experiencing this buildup. Also regular minerals in our water can also really build up on the hair. This is called hard water. Those mineral deposits can really sit on the hair and build up and those cannot be removed with a regular shampoo. You actually need a special shampoo that has chelating ingredients and these actually bind to those minerals and remove them. Something like the AG Renew Clarifying Shampoo is a great option because this will not only remove product buildup, but it will also remove those mineral deposits on the hair and even chlorine. It says that it's also really great for swimmers as well. It is sulfate free, so it's still going to be gentle on the hair and not going to strip the hair, but this is a stronger shampoo than your typical everyday shampoo. So that's usually why I will recommend using a very rich conditioner or a deep conditioner after you clarify. And the Renew shampoo also comes in the liter size refillable pouch as well. This is a great option to just use about once a month or so, just depending on how often you get that buildup on your hair. Another common mistake is washing your hair in hot water. Did you know that water over 100 degrees Fahrenheit can actually damage your hair? It damages the cuticle layer, which is the outermost layer of our hair that is protective. It's what can be damaged by using heat styling tools and chemical services like bleaching and dyeing your hair, but it can also be damaged by water. And a lot of times you will notice the top half of your head is more porous, meaning that the cuticle layer is more damaged, so it's letting in a lot more moisture and absorbing more product, but it's also letting the moisture escape more quickly. So you might notice that your hair becomes very dry. I don't know if you've ever just air dried product free and really assessed your hair. Every time I do this, the whole top section of my hair dries super fast because it is so much more porous and the lower section looks a lot healthier. And so that definitely tells me that I've probably been using too hot of water on my hair. I mean, this can also happen from damage from the sun as well. Plus the top layer is just more exposed to the elements and stuff. So it's going to be a little bit more damaged. Use more of like a lukewarm water. Like you don't have to use cold water by any means. It's actually a myth that cold water seals our hair's cuticle, but using water that is more of a lukewarm temperature is better and it's not going to cause as much damage to the cuticle. Don't forget to check out that sale from AG so you can get a free regular size product when purchasing the leader size products. They have a lot of products available in the leader size pouches, which is nice. Lots of different shampoos and conditioners, 
the Curl Fresh one that I use as well as the Balance Shampoo and Conditioner. That's another favorite set of mine that I've used for a really long time. They also have the Recoil Cream available in a pouch, so lots of great products that you can get in this deal. So we'll have that linked down below. And again, like I mentioned, if you're seeing this after the sale, no worries, I have a discount code for AG that you can use anytime, so that will be in the description box down below as well. If you're still struggling with washing your hair and you're experiencing a lot of webbed wet frizz and a lot of tangles, then I recommend checking out the video next that I have linked right here on the screen. It's all about how to fix webbed wet frizz. And this is that frizz that happens when you're shampooing and conditioning and your hair looks super frizzy even when it's wet. I hope it helps you all out and I hope you enjoyed this one as well. And I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.